This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey photographer, Jessica Whitaker here. And in this video, I am going to cover all things external hard drive. I'm gonna be talking about backup systems, what brand I recommend, what size drive to buy, the difference between a solid state drive and an external hard drive, why using an external hard drive is so important. And for my Apple users, the disk utility program on the Mac. This is one of the most important points. So stick around to the end to listen because this this could save you so much time and trouble. Number one, let's talk about what's an external hard drive. An external hard drive is where you can store all of your image files so that they do not live on your computer, but rather on a separate device that you plug into the computer. Having the file stored separately is going to allow your computer to run faster and smoother. Now, there are two main hard drives available, one being a solid state drive or known as an SSD and then an external hard drive. And the main difference is that an SSD is a newer piece of technology. It does not have any moving parts in it. All of the data is recorded on a chip, whereas an external hard drive does have moving parts, and that is what it's going to store and record the files. A SSD is faster than a hard drive, and it will allow you to be able to work on larger files at a faster pace. But an SSD is much more expensive than a hard drive. What I recommend to do is work off of an SSD and use your external hard drives to store your images. So for example, you're going to edit the files on your SSD, but once you have exported and delivered the images to your clients, you can move those files into the external hard drive so that you're not going to have stacks of SSDs because this is not for storage. This is for working on actively and the external drive is for storage, but you can also use it to work off of. So you do not need an SSD right off the bat. It is not a necessity, but it's something to look into and it's something I want to cover since we're on the topic of external hard drive. Drives. However, if you are just starting out in photography, if your budget is limited, then working off of an external hard drive is perfectly fine. But we do need to talk about backup systems. Before we get into backup systems and how to protect your files, I want to thank my sponsor Squarespace for making this free video possible. A photo speaks a thousand words, but a polished and professional portfolio can get us those thousand dollar clients. Enter Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for websites and domains. Photographers, it's time to be done settling for slow loading websites with tedious plugins. I trust Squarespace's all-in-one platform to keep me booked and busy. Pick from one of their dozens of contemporary drag and drop layouts, host your custom domain and email with them, and even conduct successful email campaigns. Everything you need to run a successful photography business under their umbrella and at your fingertips. You can head to squarespace.com to begin your free trial and when you are ready to launch your beautiful professional website, you can go to squarespace.com slash Jessica Whitaker to get 10% off of your first purchase of a website or a domain. Here's one of many ways that you can back up your files. You can have two external hard drives and they will be carbon copies of each other. That way, if one drive fails, you have an exact copy on another drive. Yes, this does mean that you have to purchase double the hard drives, but I'm going to be sharing with you some budget options in the next point when I cover what size hard drive to buy. I also recommend having an additional external hard drive on hand that remains blank. The reason being is I have heard so many horror stories where hard drives corrupt, you get an error message, they crash, but then the photographer is able to plug it into their computer and all looks fine only to find out that an hour or two later, maybe the next time they plug it in, then the hard drive has failed. So in that case, you only have a limited time to be able to move those files. And if you do not have enough space on your other hard drives to move the files, then you're out of luck. So having a blank drive is a bit of a safety net for you. You can think of it as insurance for yourself and peace of mind. There are so many different ways to back up your images from external storage to cloud, and this shouldn't be the only way that you do it. In fact, in my memory card video, which you can watch on the iCard above, I share with you how to back up your files on the memory card itself. Watch that video after this one because it goes hand in hand. What size external drive should you buy? So I use primarily a four terabyte and this will hold about three months worth of files for me. And for reference, I work off of a Canon 5D Mark IV. 
And with this being said, there was a period of time when I was using two terabyte drives when I was traveling. I wanted to bring with me a smaller drive so that I wasn't holding all of my files with me in my purse, in my suitcase, in my backpack. And I didn't want to risk losing everything if something corrupted. Now, of course, we are backing up our hard drives, but I am a little bit overly cautious with everything having to do with my images. And so to me, having it on a smaller drive, even though I couldn't store three months of photos, I was putting one and a half months of files on it, but I would only lose one and a half months of files if anything went wrong with it. It's a little bit chaotic energy, but I am a Taurus. I also like that the two terabytes was smaller and so it would take up less room in my tote bag, my camera backpack, even my purse if I was going to be carrying it on me rather than a four terabyte, which is heavier. This thinking about splitting up the files on different hard drives is in line with my thoughts about shooting on multiple memory cards throughout a photo shoot, especially if you do not have dual card slots on your camera. Again, you're going to want to watch that memory card video after this one because we carry the same kind of energy over there. I just like to be overly cautious. And buying two two terabytes versus one four terabyte isn't that much of a cost difference. When it comes to the size, it's all going to depend on your budget and on your personal preference. What brand of external hard drive should you buy? I am going to have my two favorites linked down below. One of them is a bit more delicate and something that I would use when I was keeping my computer stationary at my desk. But once I started working at a co-working space and I was transporting my hard drives around, I wanted something a little bit more durable just to give me peace of mind. Both are great but I do use the more durable one now just because I haven't needed to change it. Both options are linked down below. And if you are not wanting to buy on Amazon, I will have an Amazon alternative called Shop Moment down below and you can get them for the same price point and fast shipping. Lastly, this part of the video is boring, but it's so important. And that is the disk utility program on Apple computers. Now, if you don't use Mac and you have a different operating system, still listen up because you will be able to Google the disk utility equivalent on your computer. You need to familiarize yourself with the disk utility program. Now, how to access this on an Apple device is you are going to go to your launch pad and you will search disk utility in the search bar. This is where your hard drives are going to show up. So let's say you plug in your hard drive and you can hear it running, but it's not showing up on your desktop or in your finder. You can mount and unmount the hard drive in disk utility. Most of the common problems you might be experiencing with a hard drive, such as it not recognizing on your computer, can be troubleshooted in the disk utility program. And in my experience, this is where I'm notified of any errors with my hard drive. So let's say it's telling me it's going to fail or it has failed, and the time is ticking, I can go over to my blank drive and transfer over any files needed. But remember, this is why we also want to have a carbon copy of our hard drives. Now that you know how to store your files, what type of memory card should you write them on? I'll see you over in my memory card video. Be sure to hit subscribe so that you're the first to know when a new free tutorial for your photography business comes out. And if you're looking for daily tips, tools, and resources, follow along over on Instagram at Jessica Whitaker. If you are looking to join a kind, encouraging, and inclusive photography community where you can ask questions and share your work, check Check out my Build and Bloom Photography Facebook group. It's free to join and I can't wait to see you there. Don't forget to start your Squarespace free trial linked in the description box below. I believe in you and I believe in your business and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.